Hello everyone, welcome to another Sunday check-in on Monday. <laughs> As I said, I record these on Sunday and I post them on Monday. Um, so I'm at the end of another week and possibly my last weekend using this particular space as a gym. Yes, this is my gym. But before we get into what I want to talk about this week, let's look at how the week went. So check it out. So it rained most of last week with the exception of one day. It was raining off and on, off and on. And that trend seems to be continuing into this week is raining off and on, off and on. But it's Monday. Um, the knee is feeling, you know, pretty much normal. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw some cardio in. Um, and I'm still planning on going on a nice walk today. So welcome back to Sunday. All I've done for Sunday is I did basically a 20 minute um, stretch routine and included some ab work on the exercise ball. Um, and the exercise ball has just been a great addition to my fitness journey here. Um, I'll get into if I lost weight or not later in the video. I usually handle that last. Why? Because it's the least important thing. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about um, I, I think I titled this video, Dear Fat People. Um, and my big thing is, dear fat people, stop listening to what you can't do. Um, I've heard this very well-intentioned comment repeatedly. I was like, I know somebody who's your size and wow, you're doing great because like they can't do ABC. Um, and a lot of people mean well. Um, but here's the thing about weight as a number. It is so variable to people. Uh, the question always is, how sedentary are you? I mean, like, before you start any sort of fitness journey, how sedentary were you before it? The fact is, if you're skinny, you're still going to struggle if you've been sitting on your butt most of the time. You know, a skinny, lazy person maybe more accepted walking into a room but they're still if they've been sedentary if they've been sitting on their butts um if they haven't been exercising if they're just skinny and they don't have muscle they're still going to struggle at a lot of the things you struggle with at the beginning now they won't have as much weight to lift which is to their benefits there's a lot of situations like lunges and um you know, squats where you're lifting your own body weight. And obviously, if you have more of it, it's going to be more of, of a struggle than if you have less of it. But if you've had, like me, I've always had active jobs. I have not had really, except for the brief time I was a production manager and hated it, all of my jobs have mostly required me to be on my feet the entire time, like most of the jobs I've had in my life, or they require a lot of activity. Like even with stage managing, like I have to walk in usually, um, depending on if I'm on a team or if I'm alone or if I'm the ASM or if I'm just support some support person backstage. Like, yes, I will sit at a desk eventually and read from a book. But, like, there's not a lot of, there, there's always some involvement with sitting around. And most of my, like, labor jobs, 
the entire shift is standing up, sometimes lifting things. I've worked in warehouses where like we had to lift boxes of books. Um, I worked in an Amazon warehouse briefly um, oh, not too long ago as a filler job. Um, so I haven't had a lot of jobs where there was a lot of sitting around being sedentary. Um, and I haven't had a life that's very, like, sedentary. Now, mind you, it has not been up to athlete standards either, but, like, walking and moving around and things like that, like, I haven't had this huge, like, sedentary lifestyle, um, that, you know, where the idea of getting up and walking is, like, you know foreign to me or something and I feel like you know there is that that is a big deal I mean if you've had like a bunch of desk jobs you know on top of having gained some weight due to maybe some unhealthy life habits like that's going to be different than if you're at least semi-active in some way you're not an athlete but you're not like you know needing a, a walker or like a um mobility chair to get around so there's a lot of like weight is just a number it's an important number it's a marker it's certainly something you know depending on your height weight activity situation where it can cause some concern um but it's it's not like every 250 pound person is going to be the same um, I used to watch these uh, videos that, or these uh, infomercials that would advertise like um, weight loss videos or products or whatever, and usually somebody would come in and, and they'd be like, um, I'm 250 pounds, or, or no, because they'd be in their after photo, so they'd be like, when I was 250 pounds, I couldn't even go to the playground with the kids, it was, I couldn't even pick up the baby, like it was exhausting to just, and I'm sitting there like, I'm bigger than that now and I, I wouldn't have any problems doing that stuff um and they may have just been over exaggerating for the video um because a lot of like fitness sales are about before and after pictures what they don't tell you like um a lot of the beach body programs I have are are three months um and they're like "Ooh, track your fitness for three months or the cycle is three months but what they don't tell you a lot of about those before and after pictures is those people have been through several cycles so they did three month cycle they did the three month cycle again or they went on to another program continuously like now they may have used that program to lose weight but they usually did it in more than three months if they have huge numbers like if they just had a little bit of belly fat you know and maybe some some things they wanted to change if they're telling the truth because they get people who lie on these things all the time they're infomercials they sell stuff but if they're telling the truth which is the case honestly with a lot of the beach body programs what they don't tell you is they did this three month program for 18 months or something like that if they were like extremely overweight um and so there's this programming around unsuccessful while you're fat and successful when you get skinny. And so like they'll do the before shots where, you know, you're unactive as a, as a quote unquote fat person and like you're so sad and you're so depressed and there's all these things you can't do. And then they'll say after the program, leaving how long vague. And then you'll see this person like jogging and like lifting weights and like looking awesome. And like they don't tell you how long that took. And also like there's a point in the journey like, I don't know if you've noticed, these stupid necks are getting, like, really loose on me. I actually had to tighten up my sweatpants. But guess what? When people see me walk in the world, they still see a fat woman. It does not matter that I've been, like, work, you know, working out five days a week for, like, what, two and a half months now? Maybe two months. Maybe I'm exaggerating. I don't know. But <laughs> the fact that I've been working out consistently that long doesn't matter because that's not what they see. They see a fat person. <laughs> And they will continue to see a, a fat person for months and months into this journey. But it does not change the fact that there is a health improvement to exercise and eating right that happens over time. But we're so busy telling fat people based on a number what they can't do instead of asking them what they can do. Um, walking, for example... When I decided to add walking, I, it wasn't about 10,000 steps. It wasn't about 8,000 steps. It wasn't about any amount of steps. It was like, I'm going to get up this morning and add walking. So you know what I did? I walked around the block and I came back. That's all I did that day. And it was just like, all right, I'm going to add walking. <laughs> That's an activity I'm adding. And as I felt up to it, I could add to that walking. 
and that's all it was. It was like, my, I'm obviously being more sedentary than normal in this situation. I need to change it. I'm going to go out and walk today. And it wasn't about meeting a number. And then as those things become too easy and you want to challenge yourself more, you can up the scale. So it's like, I'm just going to make sure I walk today. What does walking mean? It means I walked around the block. Maybe it means I walked to the corner and came right back. But at least I got out of the house and walked. I set the goal to walk. And that goal was fulfilled. Now, when it uh, becomes very obvious that that is too easy, all right, let me walk two blocks. All right, let me walk, you know, a mile. Oh, let me go up the street with a steep hill to challenge me a little bit more. Like, whatever that raise in the challenge is. But first, you have to take the first step. You know, what's that quote? The journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step or something like that. Um, so it's like, again... Yeah, it's what can you do? I wrote down some other stuff that I wanted to say. I'm getting a little ranty in this. <laughs> um, another thing is when I hurt my knee, um, and I wasn't sure how, and it, I tend to heal quickly anyway. I, I've never really been a person to like stay sick or hurt, and part of that might just be because I'm hard headed. <laughs> so <laughs> I have to mediate um, pushing myself against uh, being sensible. Um, and I feel like I did okay. <laughs> um, but when I wasn't sure and it was really becoming a lot, I did look up chair exercises. They do exist. So for chair exercises, you don't have to, all you have to do is put some effort into lifting. Um, um, which I find, I don't know if it's true for everybody, but I find I can do that a little bit easier than stuff that, the, the you know, if I'm honestly lifting with my arms and maybe just my arms are stronger than my legs I find it a little bit easier I love walking don't get me wrong but like I could you know I feel like I can push myself a lot more when I'm just sitting down like okay I'm gonna I'm gonna do a couple more I'm gonna like you know lifting dumbbells but also there are actual actually and I didn't know these existed until I hurt my knee there are actual cardio exercises you can do in a chair there are chair exercises and maybe that's the first step maybe it's like I'm gonna start doing these until I feel a little little bit stronger again it's about what you can do these things exist for me specifically going back to the exercise ball I got the exercise ball um, because I thought it might help me not to have to get all the way on the ground I still have a lot of problems getting all the way on the ground <laughs> <laughs> like that has not changed. <laughs> um, I can do do it sometimes, but I have a lot more limitations when I have to do something that gets me all the way to the ground and get all the way back up. Doesn't mean I can't do it. Doesn't mean I'm like not taking steps to move forward. But it does take some extra steps for me to be able to do those things. But I'm not worried about what I can't do. It said, oh, it's like okay, there's a barrier. What bridge can I build um, to kind of start to move over that barrier? Like, that's the question. It's not about what what can't be done. It's about what can be done and always flipping that narrative. Um, uh, another thing is, like, there are weights you can just add to your body. Like, I have weights I can strap to my hand, um, which just increases uh, sort of the, the challenge to the exercise um, within my limitations like that's still adding a challenge so I'm asking myself what can I do to add a challenge so that I'm upping the ante I also know people who like they'll do the ankle weights and that's fine like what does work for you what can you do not what can't you do another example um and this is when I was going to the gym in college um another friend of mine was all like she, she was she was overweight as well she was more overweight than me at the time um and we decided we were like we're gonna go to the gym we're gonna start going to the gym we're gonna go to the gym um and this is one of the times i got i got you know in one of the more decent um shapes of my life and i went to the gym the first time and i got on the treadmill for five minutes again it was about what i can do not about what i can't do you see what i'm saying here uh let's see what else i have on my list uh, doo -doo -doo. Oh, that's another thing I wanted to talk about. <laughs> so I do a lot of exercise videos and I've had some cr critics, maybe isn't the right word, but some people are like, hey, I don't know if you should be, you know, doing that at, at your size. Number one, they've never seen the whole workout because I've never published a whole workout. It's always been clips um, intentionally. Um, but with a lot of these videos... And I've had to do this at the beginning stages. Sometimes you have to sit something out. And that is okay. 
Um, now you can just flat out sit it out. Like you can be like, all right, I can't do what that girl is doing on that video. And you can just flat out sit it out. Or you can do some, an alternative. Like you can march in place so that you keep moving. That way you're not, you're not like, you know, telling your heart rate to go down to like a resting state again. But you can just march in place. Like just march, march, march. Okay, now they're doing something I can do again and jump back in. And that way you keep moving. But, you know, you've acknowledged a limitation. I think there's a difference between an acknowledging a limitation and putting I can't do it in your head. Because if there's a limitation, maybe you can work towards eliminating that limitation. Um, so, yeah, so sitting it out, um, marching in place, you know, doing something, marching in place, running in place, like doing some alternate activity that's keeping you active so you can jump back in on that thing you want. And if you need to sit out like a rep or set, it's like, all right, I'm going to sit out a set, jump back in. I'm going to sit out a second, jump back in. And keeping that like can do attitude moving forward, I think is the most important thing. Um, I don't want this to go too long. But let me just go over a couple, a couple of other things real quick before I close this out. All right. So maybe hopefully you guys can see me um, pretty decently. So one thing, I love to do Turbo Jam videos. One thing Turbo Jam has is a lot of kicks. Um, the thing about kicks is they're very adjustable. So maybe Shalene is doing something where she's going really, really high. I don't necessarily have to go that high. I can do a little kick. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, she's like, wham! And I'm like, wham! And it still works. And it doesn't mean I have to lower my intensity. I'm just not kicking as high. Or I think, let me think. She does something like, it's like, bam, 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 something. Hang on, give me a second. Like this. That's what it is. It's like, that's a very common move, right? Well, especially when I was struggling a little bit. Um, with being able to bring my knee up that high, or sometimes, honestly, just when I get a little tired, because we're getting, you know, we've gone through a big thing, one, I'll just do it as a step. So I'll do punch, punch, step, and step without doing the knee lift, but I'm keeping moving while I'm stable and beat with what's going on. Alteration, still keeping in the beat, still doing the cardio. Um, so see the other thing. So jumping jacks. We know, all know how jumping jacks work. It's like, eh, bam. All right. I'm going to be real honest with you guys. I have very large boobs and they don't like jumping. <laughs> At all. <laughs> they don't like jumping. You know, yes, I've all tried all kinds of things to support. But these, these things want to do that. <laughs> but even if you're just like, it's just an energy thing, there's also an alteration. Instead of jumping... I can just put my legs out and do my arms like this. And I'm still moving and raising my heart rate. There we go. Jumping jacks. Alteration. There's another one I do. Let me think. I think it's like I just step forward. This is the other one. So I can go wide. Step forward. Now honestly I can do a couple of real ones but I'll probably get tired. Um, a little faster doing the actual jumping in addition to the whole boob problem because they're just big and they don't like a lot of jumping they kind of reject the jumping <laughs> and we haven't yet found a bra that complements the jumping and this has been a case for like my entire life I think that's also why I don't like running because they tend to move around a lot when I run. <laughs> they see these things like the move hopefully that won't me get me demonetized on YouTube um yeah, so I think that's like just the main thing. There's a lot of places, like I said, if you want to skip an exercise, you can jog. You can walk in place. You can jog in place. Like, okay, I'm waiting this out. I can't do this thing that you're doing. So I'm just going to jog in place so it's over. Oh, now we're doing this thing? All right. I'm going to do this thing now. Because that's what we're doing. And I can do that. I can do that thing before, though. So that's pretty much it. What can you do versus what can't you do? Changing that narrative changes a lot there are chair exercises there are people who are athletes that are like missing limbs and you know why there are athletes who are missing limbs because they ask yourself what they could do <laughs> they didn't ask yourself what they couldn't do i think there's a dancer out there who has no legs um i think he's a guy hmm. i'm pretty sure i saw him and like you can look at people like that do you have 
you know, two working arms? Do you have legs that can walk a block? Is that where you have to start? And if you have to walk a block for a month before you can walk two blocks, that is okay. Um, before when I did Selena, Shalene Extreme, um, which is a beach body program and I was successful, what I realized is I needed to do the first month, cycle three months before I was ready for the second part of that program. Even though the program is designed to happen over three months, I needed to do that, that first month for three months before I was ready for the second month in my fourth month. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, if you accept the journey is going to be long and it's about lifetime change, it just changes your mindset. And I really think we need to, like, change the narrative. I, I loved my mom to death, um, but her biggest excuse about why she couldn't exercise was her age. Um, she was, like, I don't, she was skinny when she was younger. I don't remember her as a skinny like a, an extremely thin woman um in my in my recognizable memory um and she certainly um uh ga gained a significant amount of weight before her her passing um and i don't think it helped what was already other troublesome health situations um and it's so funny because my mom was the one who taught me um, to try to fix things, because her whole thing was, um, what did she used to say? If it's broken, you can't break it further. <laughs> like, all you can do is fail and have to replace it anyway. Um, and that's a mindset I've, like, carried through me through my life. Like, if it's broken, you can't break it more. That's not necessarily true, <laughs> but it's a mindset I've carried. So, like, you know, there were times she, I saw her, I never thought, would have thought you could rewire a plug on a television until I saw her do it. And because, like, she didn't have... Yes, she grew up in this traditional space where, like, it was expected you were going to have a husband and the husband was going to take care of all those things. Well, it turned out she had to divor divorce her husband and she was raising a kid by herself. So when things broke around the house, you know, she'd pull out a toolbox and start to try to fix it. Um, and she used to tell me, you know, if it's broken, you can't break it further. So, like, if, um, you know, something was going wrong with the TV um, or the VCR or whatever... It's like, try to fix it. If it's broken, I'll completely I'll replace it. So I'll either fix it so that it becomes a functional thing again, or it'll be completely broken forever. This is going to be a long video because <laughs> I did a lot of ranting. Um, but she wouldn't get that way about her own health, you know? Um, like, 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 to the point where she, she could get this can-do attitude, um, it became very cannot do. I can't do it because, you know, I weigh too much. I can't do it because I'm getting old. I can't do it because et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And until you change sort of your own narrative to can do, um, you're going to be stuck in can't do. So I got nothing else to say on this subject. I actually probably could go on about this for a while. So the numbers, uh, I currently weigh... Um, 309.6 was my weigh-in today. So it was 309.6, which means I'm down, I think it's 1.2 pounds since last week. Um, so I lost the, the you know, uh, 1.2 pounds. <laughs> it's not that impressive of a number. Not as impressive as, as the week I almost did eight. Uh, but I'm not worried about it. It There are still some limitations to my knee. Um, there are things I used to do that required going down on my knee that I can't really do or I'm modifying or I'm doing differently. Um, I don't really blame it on that. I think like this is just the natural flow of weight loss. Like I said, my shirts are feeling like really loose in the neck all of a sudden. Um, and, uh, I've had to pull the drawstring on my sweatpants, which, you know, hasn't happened <laughs> in a while. So those things are good and I'm just taking, taking the good and moving forward and that's all I got for this week. See you later. Hey!